Hey guys, welcome back to Sheepdog Response YouTube. Today we're gonna to talk about how to build a battle belt and why and where to put the stuff that's gonna go on your belt. Hey, welcome back to Sheepdog Response. I'm Yako Kalili, Director of Training for Sheepdog Response. We're here, just we're gonna to put together a belt. We're just gonna walk through it, talk through it. Um, I'll explain some reasons why I put things in certain areas. What feels best for me is not always gonna feel best for you. Uh, my only suggestion is get like me, bro. Get like me, fix yourself, okay? But first, we're gonna talk about uh, our Tim Kennedy signature line. This is the, uh, the rigid belt, again with the, uh, the padded Velcro inner belt. The cool thing about this is that this belt right here can be used as a regular belt. I have to have a pair of pants or tactical pants or whatever it is that these will go through the belt loops. But this goes against my, uh, this goes in through my belt loops around my body. Um, it can tighten and loosen depending on how big you are. What I like about it is, is I can have different setups, right? So I can have a belt set up for pistol. I can have a belt set up for shotgun. I can have a belt set up for, um, for precision or whatever it is. I just take off the external belt that has those attachments to it, grab my pistol belt, put that on for when I go to the range and I'm teaching pistol, or if we're doing a, a shotgun course, I just put that belt aside, grab my uh, belt that has my shotgun pouches and caddy on it, and I can use that. Um, that's what I really like about these belts is I don't have to, I don't have to, um, I can just, you know, quick change basically. And then when I get done with the day, I take this off, set this in the back seat of my truck, get in my car and drive home, it's all good. For today's build, we're gonna be putting on the IFAC. We're gonna be putting on the uh, tourniquet with holder, one three inch pistol mag holder, and the, the, the double stack AR um, mag holders. And for this one, we're gonna be using the, uh, the Vega holster. Um, this is really good for instruction purposes because I can switch through all of my different pistols. I can grab somebody else's pistol that's in the class and, and show them how, how to work from this. I don't have to get a specific uh, holster, but that's gonna be dependent on, on your preference, right? Any of this stuff, all of this stuff, whenever I put it on my belt or the stuff that I use is all shooter preference. All right, so what does that mean? It means that there are generally gear that people will use, like the uh, Tim Kennedy signature line, but if it's not comfortable for you, find something that is comfortable, um, because if it's not comfortable, you're not gonna train with it, you're not gonna get good with it, and that's not what we, what we want. We want everybody to be comfortable and good, get through the fundamentals, and then once you figure out kind of what you're used to, what, what things need to change, then you can either get a different belt system or add and take away, depending on what your preferences are. For this belt system, we're gonna need some malice clips, so make sure that you have enough for each piece of equipment. Because I'm putting on um, a uh, double stack AR mag, a pistol mag holder, and um, a dump pouch, I'm gonna need two malice clips per. Um, so I got six right here, be ready to go. And again, you know, rule number one when it comes to to any tactical gear is look cool. And what's looking cooler than having a uh, sheepdog response patch on your IFAC? I, I don't know, you can't, you can't answer that question for me any other way. All right, now, the way we're gonna build this belt is we're gonna build the belt with the IFAC in the center and the back. Um, the reason I like it there is because it has pull tabs on both sides. So depending if I need to pull it with my right or left hand, I just reach my, my hand back, stick it through these loops, and I could pull it out. So the closer this is to the center of your back, the easier it's gonna to be to access with uh, your left or right hand. It's hard to put it on while the pack is on the inside. So I always take that off first. Then I need to do some math, right? I count how many slots there are. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, which means that 10 is the center, right? So I count through 10, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10. This line is gonna be my center. Sometimes what I'll do is I'll kind of like crease it a little bit just to give me a little bit of a reference. And then I'll get my IFAC holder and line it up. Now, whenever you look at this, you'll see that this IFAC holder might have a difficulty centering depending on how many slots. This belt only has 20, so luckily it should line up center. And the way that I do that is I find the center and I just line these tabs up like just like this. A good tool to have is a needle nose pliers. Um, I'm gonna be using this, this Gerber tool 
only because I got it from the army for free 20 years ago and I still have it. It's a great tool. What I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna decide which slots are gonna go in. It's gonna be these two right here. I'm actually gonna feed the belt back on itself so that it opens this loop just like this. And then I'm gonna insert that tab in there. Now through the uh, miracles of video editing, we're just gonna go ahead and go through all this. Now, once I've gone through the first loop, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna feed it through this loop that comes with the, uh, with the IFAC. And what this is gonna do is it's gonna keep the space between my belt and the IFAC smaller so that when I do try to draw my uh, IFAC out, this doesn't slide, all right? The tighter that my straps are, or the tighter that my mouse clips are to the actual piece of equipment that I'm attaching to the belt, the less movement I'm gonna get. And that's exactly what I need when I'm drawing a weapon or when I'm trying to pull something out of my mag holder or in an emergency situation, take my IFAC out of my IFAC holder. This is weird doing it like this because you're like going to show what you're doing. And that's not always the easiest way to put shit into fucking <laughs> into loops. All right. Now, once I feed it through the bottom loop, now it's time to snap this shut. use anything you want to use this little just like that you feel it snapping do that to both sides and 45 minutes later super easy <laughs> all right fact holder is on now how do I orientate the rest of my, my equipment? Now, whenever I put this belt around, again, it's not, um, I used a smaller one here to help, but I wanna make sure that when I reach down, when I wanna do my mag changes, that my magazines are sitting close to my hip or basically where my nat hands will naturally fall. I like to tell people this, put your hands at the ready, at the ready position or at an interview stance. And whenever I just put my hands on my hips, that's where Either your gun's gonna go, depending on what hand, what, what hand you're shooting with, and the opposite side is gonna be to where you're gonna draw your magazines. What I don't want you to do is try to reach behind your back something that's unnatural because it's not as fast. And fast is important because we're talking about who's able to put more rounds down range faster. That's, who, that's who's gonna win a self-defense situation. So the more easier access that I have to my, to my gear, the better. If not, let's say I'm doing something from concealed, then the most important thing is to train. So I wanna make sure I train to draw that stuff but we're talking about a belt specifically, um, it just needs to be easier access. Now, when I put the belt down as, as if I'm wearing it, my uh, mag holders are gonna go in the left and I'm gonna leave room on the right for my, for my holster. Now we're gonna install, um, for this case, I'm just gonna put the, uh, for the pistol mag holders, they're gonna be first on the far left and then working on, on our way in, um, we're gonna be putting the uh, AR mags. So the first thing is, the pistol mags. So what I want to do here is I'm, whenever I line them up, I'm going to kind of like put it on itself like this as if I was wearing it. And then I'm going to fold it over and that's going to kind of tell me like how I'm going to put my, my, my stuff in, right? Now with our malice clips, those are going to go in first and I want to orient it so that the, the button that were to where it's like um, access goes on the inside, which means that I need to turn it away from myself this way so that when I feed it through, when I flip it back over, it's gonna be the right way. Now, the way I'm gonna do this one is just gonna feed it through all three holes. All three straps here for the mountainous clip. I'm gonna do that for both sides. And again, it would line up like this. So now I rotate it over and again, I bend the belt back and we're going to weave. First one goes in the top. I'm going to pull these all the way through. And then now I'm going to go in between the middle strap. Again, what we we're talking about earlier when it comes to the, uh, the IFAC holder, the tighter my equipment is to my belt, the easier it's going to be for me to draw. There's not going to be any give whenever I, whenever I try to pull my magazine out. So I feel it back on itself. I go down the center, just like that for both sides.
Then I flip my belt all the way over and I pull these through. Just like that. Now that I've gone through the middle of the uh, mag holder, I go through the bottom loops of the belt. Again, bending the belt, uh, the bending the belt against itself will give me some room. If not, I get my tool just to pop it through just like that. I can use my tool to pull these things all the way through. I just want to make sure that I'm not damaging any of these loops. There we go, nice and tight. And I finish by inserting it into the bottom part of the Atlas clip. Just like that. This is real easy if I use this tool, just pinch right here, fold it back on itself, force it in. Now for this one, you can see the belt's kind of sitting even with the mag holder. Again, there's room enough for this to sit one higher. That's all shooter preference. For me, I like it as close to the belt as possible. Again, there's no space. You can see how these are locked into place. What I really like about these mouse clips is that if I want to change something, if I do want to make it higher, if I do want to adjust this up and down my belt, I just stick a sharp edge or something small through the edge of this thing, and I'm able to remove the equipment, no problem. It doesn't damage the mallet clips. I don't have to cut them off. I don't have to buy new ones. I can use the same ones over and over again. Now, I'm just going to place my double stack AR mag right next to it, just like this. And the process is going to be exactly the same. Okay, I'm going to be sitting it just like this. So again, a feed through all of these. All right, you can see here, again, everything finishes the same. Um, I mentioned earlier again that the uh, the AR mag is a little bit taller, so that's why we're gonna have this, this little bit of height difference between the two. You have to understand that AR mags are usually longer, um, so you're not gonna get a shorter version of this unless you have like a, a short 10 round magazines for all the, uh, for all the uh, um, communist uh, states out there. You probably have those, but even those are still just as long, but that's the, that's why these two heights are different. And I just finished again by using my tool to insert these tabs into the bottom. So for this case, um, I'm going to put the tourniquet on the right hand side so that I have access, access to it with my, with my dominant hand, which means that I need to put the dump pouch on the opposite side. Now, some belts are longer than others, right? It's, this is a medium sized belt, so it doesn't have as many slots. So you're gonna see how tight everything is right here. Whenever I put this dump pouch, and then I put my uh, tourniquet holder, there is still room for, there is still room for the holster. Um, I would actually put this on first, so it tells me how much room I'm gonna need, right? If I try, if I push this too far, and I don't have room for my holster, I'm gonna have to take this off again and start over. So I put my holster on first, exactly where I would want it. So as I wear it, my holster would go right on the, maybe like two loops back, because I look at my hand, my holster would go right here. So with this one, again, this is why we like Vega holster, is that it sits right where I need it to. It's already just as wide as I need it to, right here. I just fold this thing over, fold the clip over. It feeds onto itself, make sure it's locked into place here. Then I just turn this dial, and now that holster's set, set in place. It's not gonna move. And again, another, another cool thing about this is I just have to buy one holster. If for some reason I have to go lefty, which would be weird, I always remove these, these screws, flip it around, and then attach securely on the opposite side. Very good, uh, very good holster. But now let's see, uh, let's attach our, our, uh, our butt pack, which again, you, utilizes the malice clip system, so it's gonna be exactly the same, right? Exactly the same setup as we did before. Now, if you've seen my pre previous range video on our Sheepdog Response YouTube, you know that this, this dump pouch is really good for important equipment like candy and Monsters and Red Bull and stuff like, you know, important range stuff that you're gonna need. But you could use it for other things like whenever I do my mag changes, 
instead of dropping them on the ground. I could put them in here. I could put uh, staplers, staples. I could put pens in here. I could put uh, my dummy rounds can go in, in this thing. So when I pick them up, I just stick them in my dump pouch. I don't have to put them in my pocket or anything, but that's why it's good to have a dump pouch. Sometimes putting it into a dump pouch is faster than trying to find my magazine, my magazine holders. Instead of trying to look down and, and stick it in there, dump it in my pouch, I can get to it later. Now you'll notice that on this dump pouch, there's this strap right here. This strap is utilized for whenever I roll this bag up. It goes around the back like this and then attaches to itself. I wanna make sure that when I put this belt on, that's this strap right here, whenever I lay this down, doesn't get caught on the top side of my belt. So once I get my malice clips through, I can actually go ahead and ball this thing back up so that now when I attach it, that strap will be on its proper side whenever I get, get it into its place. All right. So there's the uh, dump pouch. In the army, we call these butt packs. Put that guy's in there. Last but not least, is gonna be my tourniquet. That's what I like about this holder right here. So whenever I pull this out, it's ready to go. Just grab the straps and pop it right out. Put this guy to work. It's always easier to put gear on, like the IFAC, like the tourniquet uh, holder without the gear inside. That's why I always take it out. But again, I orient it. Now, I already have this side kind of stuffed up because of everything else that's in the way. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna give myself a little bit of grace on the opposite side. I'm gonna add like two slots. Again, I wanna make sure that there's enough room for my holster to go on and if I need to adjust it, right? But this will go on the exact same way. So my uh, one of my producers here tells me we need to get a shout out to our sponsor, Yakos Holy Water. Get yours while it's out, only $100 a bottle. Um, if you buy it for here from the store, I'll filter it right in front of you. <laughs> All right, now we just gotta put everything back together. Just like that. And then I'll put the Vega holster on here again, just so you guys can see what a completed belt looks like. Also, we're not sponsored by Vega. They're not giving us any money yet. They're not, uh, we're not wholesalers of them yet, but Vega, if you see this, let us, you know, just be aware that we're out here promoting your guys' stuff. We love your equipment. There you go, guys. Completed medium battle belt with, uh, with one set of um, one set of pistol hold, uh, pistol mag holders, the three inch, double stack AR holders, our dump pouch, our IFAC, our tourniquet with holder, and then whatever your preference for holster is will go on there. And again, when I put this together with my inner belt, again the inner belt will just go through your belt loops. That's our battle belt system, guys. Again, hit us up if you have any questions when it comes to this gear. You can hit us at info at shootdogresponse.com or hit us up in the comments below. We're gonna look at all this stuff. So anything you guys wanna see, you know, a, a different type of setup. We have a bunch of different options. We have the four inch, we have the uh, the uh, kangaroo pouch where there's the AR mag and the uh, the AR mag holder and the uh, pistol mag holder on the same thing. Um, we can do this for lefty, I don't know why. Um, we could do bigger belts, hit us up, email us, comments below, all of those things. Um, just give us your input. If you guys don't like the belt, you can let us know that as well. And then you know we'll, we'll see what we can do to improve our products, which you already are. Just hit us up at shootdogresponse.com. Whenever I have uh, my morning coffee, I wanna make sure that I'm always using follically filtered Yakko's holy water, um, which should be on sale soon. Um, we have to import the water from Antarctica. Um, it's been blessed by a shaman. That's always the standard before we filter it through the beard. Nothing, nothing less than perfect for Yakko's holy water.